Munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie. Welcome back to the channel and for another rescue intake of a special needs hamster. For those of you who are new, I am a small mammal rescue 501c3 status in Washington state for hamsters, gerbils, and mice. If you're unfamiliar with brachycephalic or brachycephalic hamsters, they are Syrian hamsters with shortness of the face. Usually it's an egg shape. They're squished. They have kind of a pout that's down here that they keep pounding with all the time. The eyes are very big. However, some brachy hamsters have had uh, longer snouts. Others have had shorter snouts. They're all of different spectrum, so none of them are gonna look exactly the same. But you typically would take a second look or a second glance. Crusty eyes sometimes or watery eyes that cannot be controlled due to the shortening of the eyelid, just breathing problems or sinus issues. We've had a brachy hamster that has had a sinus tumor, and unfortunately because it's a small rodent, they can't operate on it, and it's a very risky procedure. Thankfully, she's doing very well. Her name's Betty Boop. She's still here at the rescue, but I keep finding them all over the place. And within the last two weeks, we have discovered even more people owning brachycephalic hamsters in hamster groups that don't even realize because it's either they have teeth or they don't know about the condition. Brachy hamsters can have teeth. And today's little girl that I'll be discussing with you guys, she has all of her teeth. However, two of her top are stubs. The bottom is curving inward, which indicates that the top are no longer growing. And we have not seen the top teeth even grow. So it does beg the question of, will she need to have her teeth trimmed and extracted because the top are not being grinded on because they're no longer growing. And once they become stubs, that means the roots damaged, they're not gonna grow anymore. And the stubs that are currently there right now could easily fall out and there will be no stubs at the very top. So I'm glad I found her. There are some people that have been sending me photos of what they think is a brachy hamster and I try to help out owners. I've had a lot of owners be very receptive to me asking if I could take a look at their hamsters. There's been at least a couple that were not and basically it's it is what it is. I can't help people who don't willingly want to discuss things with me, don't want to check out their hamster or even pick up their hamster, etc. But for those that have, like the lady that I helped out with her son, thank you for listening. Thank you for checking out the video that I have unlisted. That way you can actually see how to scruff a hamster. I don't know if I'm ever gonna release that or not. I just want to help people. That's why I'm here. So the way we found this special needs little hammy is from a Facebook rehoming group. I have found three brachycephalic hamsters in this Facebook rehoming group. It is insane. Two of which I did end up getting, uh, one of which is Biscuit. I don't know if this video will get out before Biscuit or if I ever will make a video for Biscuit, but Biscuit came before this hamster here. And there's another hamster that I inquired about that was being rehomed person never contacted me back and I hope the hamster's doing well because if the teeth aren't checked or people aren't checking, which normally people aren't checking their hamster's teeth and if they get rehomed to someone that's not knowledgeable, that hamster could pass away due to people just not knowing about their condition, not being able to eat, absorb nutrients because they can't chew or if they have like a mouth abscess because their teeth are just going into the roof of their mouth causing infections, abscesses, bleeding, you name it. Hold that hamster's okay, but the ad says rehoming fee, $40, nothing. Doesn't say anything. And this person has been inquiring beforehand to take in hamsters as well as snakes. So this person was inquiring up until this point, and I was like, why is this person suddenly rehoming? I also saw they were rehoming three guinea pigs and a chinchilla, which only the chinchilla one stated that the apartments that she's living in are not going to allow her to have that animal. So I assume all the animals that she is rehoming is because apartments came in where it's like, whoa, look at all these rodents, which sometimes on the lease, it will say exotic, sometimes it will not. And sometimes you just have to find out because yeah, apparently people aren't gonna just jot down all the exotic animals that you can or can't have. So unfortunately that does happen a lot. So she was rehoming a bunch. And so I decided to inquire because because I was really scared this person was a flipper, I did not introduce myself as Munchie's Place. There's been times when we have done this, there's been times when I've said, hey, my name's Munchie, I actually take in hamsters, and that was for Biscuit's case, where we were like, hey, hi, I'm very knowledgeable, here's the information, and sometimes there is a place to engage and talk to people and to educate and to let them know you take in animals, but there are people out there just looking for a buck, just looking for a quick, you know, money cash grab and things like that. But I was I was really nervous that this person might not be 
all that great. So I did not approach as a rescue because I was afraid that they would back off because this is a special needs animal. I wanna make sure that I get it and that we can see if this animal needs proper care, which this animal is actually going in in a couple weeks to be looked at. We see in the photos, the cage, and I thought it was a 20 gallon. Turns out, as you can see right beside me in the photo and in real life, it is not, it is a 10 gallon. So we got a 10 gallon, all the things you see inside of here, except for the water bottle, I took it out, um, but it was Velcroed off to the side here. And then we see in the next one, a brachycephalic hamster on here, except for it does not have any wood chips inside of this one right here. So this photo was taken a long time ago. This actually could have been where she got it at the pet store because in the photo you see just wood chips and you see just newspapers. And that to me seems like, oh, I don't want to spend a whole lot because I see a lot of people use shredded newspapers in pet stores like mom and pop pet stores that aren't really invested in the animal and they just wanna turn them around as quickly as possible so they're not actually putting a lot of money into their care while they're at the pet store. Petco and PetSmart, even though you might hate me for me saying this, but they do tend to take care of their animals more so than mom and pop stores. There's a lot in Washington say that's really neglectful. Here's some photos of them. But yeah, I don't know where this person got them from, or maybe I do. I had a conversation with this person. I will just show you what we talked about. But then I found out later that this person was rehoming two rabbits and then some cats. And in the cat ad, she said that she was downsizing her cats. I don't like when people say downsizing because it sounds like you're collecting. And in person, when my partner met them, what ended up happening was she told me that she looked like she was in high school still. She said that she got the female hamster from a family member who didn't want her anymore. And she comes with everything. Uh, I do have a bag here that I'll share with you. She's around a year old and in person, she does look like she's either under a year old or about to be a year old. By the way, this lid, this is my lid. So. Uh, this is what she basically came with, this right here. And now this says it's Zoomed and it has a beta on it. In the photo of the tank itself, right next to it was a beta tank. So this was probably previously used by her as a fish tank. So that was another thing. She, she has aquariums and she has all these animals and she lives in an apartment. Now I've been there. I used to live in apartments before I started living with family. And it can kind of be a struggle because there are places that will allow you to have small animals, doesn't matter how many number, and allow you to have a certain size of aquarium tank uh, because they just don't want you to have like an excessive amount of water because of water damage. It says right here, um, doesn't have a lid, 10 gallon, but she's gonna need a 20 gallon. So that's the thing that kind of gave me a red flag of, oh, she knows she needs more. Or maybe she thinks she needs more because she exhibit that she's not happy inside of a 10 gallon. Don't believe this person was very knowledgeable about hamsters. There is so much information online. I mean, obviously the beta in the photo looks like it's possibly in like a five to 10 gallon tank. Looks like she's doing fine. Uh, the rabbits were indoor rabbits, had their own indoor hutch. The guinea pigs, they look like they were being kept very well. She just missed the mark on hamster keeping. Maybe she wasn't as invested. And then of course her name was Chubbs and I'm keeping Chubbs because I do like the name Chubbs. We will review this now as educational purposes. I have, like I said again, no bad negative things other than she was just maybe very uneducated. I would not say that she's neglectful. She did provide different things. You see here there is hay. Um, what I don't like is what I'm gonna be discussing. So here we go. 10 gallons, only 200 square inches of floor space in the United States, 450 and above is recommended floor size for your hamsters. No matter what species of hamster must be above 450 square inches. 450 is there as a minimum, so you don't go any lower. These definitely don't recommend. Now I had someone in the comments section fight me saying that hamsters can be inside of 10 gallon tanks. I know nothing, my hamster's fine, she loves it in there. I sure as hell don't think she loves it in there. I think you are thinking that this is fine because if a pet store is telling you it is fine and you're going with what a pet store says rather than what a person online, let me just tell you. Hamsters, two miles of territory in the wild, but they travel five to 10 miles a night foraging, burrowing, making love and all those other sweet things. We haven't domesticated them in hundred years yet and we domesticated animals that spend their lives roaming around. For a small animal, you would think, well, they don't need that much space. Yes, they do. They are energetic, low buggers, and she's a female so you're a hamster in heat under a year or just approaching a year, and she may or may not be in heat. The heat every four to six days, for goodness sakes, 
So that's a lot of hormones and raginess. Now, I have seen her exhibit some hormone changes while being at the rescue because she's been here for about a week now. And I do believe she is still going into heat. So I feel like she's still very, very young. But anyways, treats like this. You don't just put a whole treat in here. You wanna put it in here, let her chew, and then take it out because this has probably honey in it and it has a lot of sugar. You just don't want her to just be eating away at this and neglecting the food that she has been given previous days. And you don't want to be feeding them all the time. Some people just throw in a ton of food and then that's just not beneficial to them. But there's also in this little bowl right here, more treats, more treats, and then you finally get the KT, I assume KT blend or the Vita Craft blend of food right here, which has like whole kernels of corn, which that's a first indication of not an appropriate diet because it has too much filler in it. We have the block, so there is a chew toy. She was knowledgeable that this is a rodent, it needs to chew. And also this like loofah, it, it's loofah, right? Yes, loofah toy, which I don't see hamsters chew on at all. Gerbils, kind of sometimes, not really. Um, but I see more guinea pigs and rabbits chewing on this than smaller, smaller rodents. And then we got the KT hide right here and just the bedding that is at least two, three inches right here. You know what? Let's just see my skills right here. Yes, it's three inches. So there's at least three inches in here. That used to be a minimum at the rescue. It's not anymore. Four to five is a minimum for us. We want personal care to go beyond five inches. So six plus is what we recommend for people. However, at the rescue, we have to use what we have when people are donating and supplying us with bedding. Bedding has been, I wouldn't say scarce, but we've been having more Aspen bedding lately being donated than paper and paper is much better when it is being mixed. And Aspen is very flat, so it can be kind of challenging to us. Looks like that's it besides just like a uh, apple stick right there. So again, not appropriate size, 200 versus 450 plus. Syrian hamsters, honestly at the rescue need 600 plus. Let's move on to the baggie and what we got in the baggie. Exercise balls, absolutely no. Please use a playpen or free roaming time in a controlled area. This gets very dirty and it is, actually it's not dirty, but it's just been widely used. Oh, okay. So this person more than likely shops at Petco because all Petco seems to sell is 6.5 inch KT wheels and seven inch flying saucers. Flying saucers, please do not use. I don't use flying saucers for hamsters anymore and for Syrians, they need to have a 12 plus inch for flying saucers and just use a classic wheel because Night Angel is the best. You can adjust the base and that's what I would recommend. I just, I just, I hate it. Plus very lightweight, easy to break, easy to squeak. Don't use flying saucers, don't even get them. And then we have section off items. Uh, I was gonna say, I thought I had a bag here, but it looks like no, they just packaged them from the bag that they originally had them in and put them in here. Now this, this is nice that they gave it to us and it's just hay so they don't eat it. They just use it as nesting material. But if we get anything that has been previously opened and we don't know like if it was contaminated, freeze freeze the bedding for at least 24 hours, killing anything inside of it. Oh, okay, yeah, so this this is definitely the really crappy KT for the diet, hamster and gerbil. This, how much protein's in this? 13.5, ooh, very low. And then of course the crude fat is six. This is not what we would be feeding. This is very low. This you can find easily at Walmart. So this is not Petco at all. This has fillers in it. It's got artificial dyes and preservatives. But yeah, we don't use this at the rescue at all. It is a really big bag. And then we also have, I guess, more of it or more of a previous food, which there is some, what almost look like oxbow pellets in here. And then this, which is actually a bird toy. Now bird toys, they are the same as hamster toys where they can chew it and this is food coloring. It will not affect your pet eternally. What it will affect is anything that touches water. If it touches water and you put your hand on it, oh my gosh, your hand is completely stained and will be stained for a while. But other than that, like at least this person did provide with chew toys. However, not enough bedding, too small of an enclosure. Like the wheel wasn't even inside and you saw in the photos, the wheel wasn't even inside. What ended up probably happening was every time the hamster would run on the wheel, it would just wake her up and she would just take it out. So we will be holding on to Chubbs until she gets her vet trip. And then if we observe her afterwards and she needs constant tooth trims, we're gonna make that known in her rehoming ad. Like I was saying in either this video or some videos before this, 
It's been really hard trying to rehome animals because this month we've had no adoptions. Last month we had one adoption, even though we have several animals that have been here for over 365 days, still be at the rescue. It's been really, really hard. So please guys think adoption first. There's nothing wrong with these guys. These guys can just be rehomed because someone just didn't want a hamster, thought it was cute, got the wrong impression and is rehoming them or their apartment is kicking them out if they do not get rid of their animals, which they might've impulsively bought because they are an animal person. There's just so many reasons why people rehome animals and I hope you guys will consider owning an animal in need rather than shopping for one. So thank you so much. Leave a like and a comment down below for YouTube's algorithm and just let me know what you thought about this video and subscribe if you're new here. I'd like to become a part of the Munchkin family. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys around in the next video. Bye!